Shook it up. I'm Karen McKenna, and uh, my background is in public health, and I teach community health at Villanova University also. And we have been involved in um, doing uh, international projects with our senior nursing students as part of a clinical experience for more than 10 years now. Yes. This is our 11th year. We started out going to Peru 11 years ago, and then we uh, went to Honduras, and we've added Nicaragua that we've been going to for about uh, six years. And um, we've also added uh, the Dominican Republic uh, as another site. And um, also um, the Texas-Mexican border for our um, nursing students uh, as part of the OB experience. So we're really trying to maximize um, different experiences for our students. Um, that will provide them with um, opportunities for working with different populations, um, getting to look at different health systems, uh, working with people from different cultures, people who live in poverty, um, and smile. <laughs> um, and that's, uh, it's been a very good experience. We take um, a regular clinical group uh, when we go, and um, we travel often but not always with um, other students from Villanova University. Um, yeah. So sometimes the students are working through the campus ministry and they're doing habitat for um, habitat type projects or we collaborate with um, the College of Engineering um, where the engineering students are looking at water sanitation, uh, provide the provision of water and uh, um, nursing students will try to educate lay people um, and members of the community on hygiene, water safety, waterborne illnesses, as well as other health pro common health problems in their communities. Uh, they usually work in the communities with local health promoters uh, and then the community in general uh, around their educational projects. They usually have the opportunity to do home visiting of some type. They will uh, be studying for seven weeks before they leave doing a community assessment and uh, on the community that they'll be going to. And then while they're there, they get to confirm or add to that uh, assessment process. And then they prioritize what they think the health uh, problems are of the community. Someone had asked us uh, just recently, how did we get started in some of these communities? Uh, one, um, one project uh, that we've been in uh, in Waslala in Nicaragua has for four years, or over six years now, um, started with students who just ended up in that community, invited the um, parish priest from that community to come up to Villanova, and the engineering students, uh, engineering faculty and nursing faculty uh, were willing to send a, a pilot group down to see if it was uh, something that we could do. And we've been um, uh, down there now for over, over five or six years, and um, we think it's been very, very successful. The engineering students have managed to um, establish um, water supplies to about 10 communities, and the nursing students have been involved in um, uh, going out to these communities, the health teaching as we talked about, and they also make home visits and do health assessments uh, while they're out in these communities. Mm -hmm. Students uh, uh, pay for their own trips. Um, however, um, there's uh, the potential for scholarships through the university and through the College of Nursing, and they do a lot of fundraising um, kinds of things. Um, so they generally um, don't end up having to pay a lot. Mm -hmm. um, they do fundraisings within their families. Um, mm -hmm. They will send it out to people that they know, and um, they share the resources pretty well. If the trips only cost about uh, one thousand to twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars yeah, per student. Yeah. So they, um, it's a lot of money, but in the scheme of things, it's not that much money for the experience. And the course that they're in is part of the regular tuition payment. So it's only the actual airfare and then the cost of what it would be to live okay, there. Sure. Um, so with the scholarships and with the fundraising, they usually have to come up with a couple hundred dollars per mm -hmm. student on mm -hmm. their own. So it's, it's very reasonable that way. The students do not find it to be a burden. And the faculty and translators are supported by the university, the College, College of Nursing, Nursing and the university. Right. So, um, the, so the students don't have to pay for our airfare out of that, which is really nice. Well, the College of Nursing's faculty are actually supported through the Conley Foundation, mm -hmm. um, not 
the university doesn't really right. pay for it. But they pay for the, any other faculty who might go. Well, and they pay for one of the, my translators yeah. okay. that, uh, that go. So, One of the outcomes that we have seen okay. uh, in Peru is that two years ago, the local health uh, promoters uh, started uh, doing educational uh, sessions like we do uh, when we come. They develop posters mm -hmm. and they talk. Uh, presented in the little uh, communities just right outside the homes in the street on different uh, health problems that they were having, malaria and a few other things. And they were so proud of themselves that they had someone take a picture, which they gave to someone who was flying back to the United States, flying back to Philadelphia, who could to give it to somebody else, to give it to somebody else, to get to us at the sure. College of Nursing. So they were very, very proud of what they had done. They should be. Because um, that's, that's, that's not something you know, that is normal there for them to do and they had very little guidance, it was all on their own. They did a really good job. So it was nice. I would say uh, we don't have hard data on outcomes, um, but um, each trip we learn more about our communities. Last year uh, we had um, more than 80 community members at the, um, uh, the health education um, classes that the nursing students gave. And some of the topics were a little touchy, such as um, domestic abuse, um, mm -hmm. And um, our community is a machismo community, so, and predominantly the, the numbers of people that were in the community were men. Uh, we were a little curious as to how it would be received, and they were very supportive. One gentleman stood up and said, this is the kind of information we need to know. And um, so I think we don't have hard data. It really may yeah, take a long time for... Um, yeah those types of outcomes to be recognized and many times I might say we're getting more from our communities than we're giving in a lot of ways. I mean our students understand the world, um, uh, see uh, that, that the United States is not the only way to do things, um, that there's a lot of successful different models out there, um, the need in the world, etc. So I think um, Sometimes maybe we learn more um, than we even give. Our, our students also, um, one of the things that, that we've seen is the, the community we go to had, had no HIV AIDS um, disease in the community. And that has sprung up in the last 11 years. So they have requested and received a fair amount of education on how to manage that uh, in the community, how to, to manage it through sanitation and the use of latrines and the spread within the community. Now they have been getting some ARVs uh, through another site, so uh, the disease itself is having some management, but the local management of very ill people. Uh, we were the group that educated them about how to manage HIV AIDS uh, in the community before drugs even became a Come in. Come in, come into my world.